secondary guys, uh, offensive receivers, two quarterbacks, three great backs, uh, some other guys in that class in that position too, uh, tight ends. So, you know, very diverse class, uh, very good class, exactly the things we need. Uh, hopefully there were, you know, we still have uh, another opportunity or so the rest of the day. So we'll see how that goes, but uh, very happy where we're at, what's going on. And uh, you know, I think there's some great young players in here. We've got seven of them in already with Cam Akers and Cyrus Fagan, Hockman, Kane Doe, McKitty, Samuels, and Thomas, which gives them a, and that's a great jump as far as going into spring, adding depth and letting them guys get situated in the, our systems early and our workout routines and how that goes. But also very happy with the rest of the guys, with James Blackman, Kalen Brooks, Corey Durden, LeBorn, Lawson, Marshall, uh, DJ Matthews, Hampshire, Jalen Park, Brady Scott, Cameron Terry, Leonard Warner, Crown J. White, and Ontario Wilson. So, I mean, it's, it's a great group. A lot of size, a lot of range, a lot of athleticism. Uh, extremely athletic. I mean, probably as many high 36 to 44 inch verticals maybe we've had in class yet. So, one of the more athletic classes we've ever had, I think, as far as that goes. Good speed, but a lot of length and range, which is uh, very exciting in, um, in that regard. So, uh, if we're not, you know, hopefully it's going to turn out. We'll find out in a year or two. You know, if they're really, you know, they can't force, you know, guys to play. Some will play this year, some won't. And then we'll find out in about two years if, you know, if our projections on guys are really good as they're helping with our class. So, any questions? Jim, is there a percentage, just going off what you said about, you know, you can find out two years from now, is there a percentage of how many guys that you want to hit? Class? You want to hit them all. But, we, you know, we've been very fortunate in hitting a lot of guys in our classes. But, you know, if you can hit, if you hit in the 75 to 80 percent range, that's extremely, extremely high. I mean, you know, when you people don't want to realize that, but that's the truth. When you really hit that, and we have been hitting in those in those regards. So we'll wait and see. You know, everybody says it's hard to get two great running backs in the same class, or maybe three. How how are you guys able to keep all those guys? Well, just honest. I mean, and, and listen, backs realize that there's different roles. You can play two at a time. You because. And the way you, when you're in a split back formation, you have a true fullback. But those guys are like having two tailback, which is a very dynamic thing to do. Guys can split out and be, you know, receivers and catch bubble screens and routes down the field, you know, do those kind of things. All those guys have those kind of qualities. And also at running back, you only have so many wrecks in your body. And learning to uh, diversify that. And, you know, this year was probably more so than I've ever done as far as numbers of carries to a back. But I thought we had an exception one with just the way the season went. And, Dalvin was playing really well, but you know we usually diversify that back when we had James and we had Carlos and uh, we had Freeman and then we had Dalvin in that mix. And we always had a large rotation of backs, and they see it being used. And those guys are making it in the league. Is there anything to be said about their competitiveness? That three guys. Oh yeah, that, yeah. listen, great players don't care. I, I've never been around a great player that I've ever recruited that ever worried about the depth because they know they're great players and know they're going to play. And those guys, can, they know they, they go take care of the business, they'll go to place. They don't worry about it. Well, what's the dynamic like when you recruit the legacy, like Brooks and Samuels? Is it, do you go in thinking, all right, these, they're ours? No, you them. never do. I mean, you can't do that. I mean, and I'm going to tell you what, it's disrespectful. I would never expect it, because and, and those kids see through it, and, and it's not, it's just because of what their dad's done here, and they were all great players here. Listen, and, and I wouldn't recruit them just because they're a legacy. I think it's disrespectful that way too because if we don't think that's a guy that can help our program, you only hurt that young man. These guys, I thought, on their own accord are guys that we think can help us win football games, have great futures here, and we that's why we recruit them. And then we recruit them just as hard or harder than we do anybody else. There's so much emphasis on this day on signing day, but with the way recruiting is now being year round, does it feel different than it did 10, 15 years ago? No ago? doubt. I mean, there's not as many. That, uh, and as I said today, that today was probably the least number of guys that were the drama of, of National Signing Day, as I can remember, you know what I'm saying? And I think it's only going, with an early signing period coming probably, it's even going to dwindle less and less, in my opinion, probably, as it comes on and, uh, and flips a lot. But it is, I mean, it's, a year-round cycle is taking some of that. You kind of got most of your hay in the barn for, this, for that sake and before it comes signing day. Do you prefer it this way? Yes, I really do. That way you know what you got. Jim, well, with this being, with the early signing period starting, next year do you feel like this is the last true signing day? No, I don't because you're still going to have guys on signing day. Again, I still think we screwed up signing day. I think it should have been in the summer. I don't think being in the in December whenever they want to do it is the right way to do it, but that's just my opinion. Though. You know, the, the early and early, can you talk a little bit about how they've acclimated? And been very well. Our guys said they fit right in, look like the guys, <laughs> they've been here already. I mean, those guys are all adjusting, going to class, the classes and all that stuff and getting 
acclimated the workouts have now started. The guys have kind of adopted them in, and players all say they you know they they like them and, and say they go they fit right in. They look like they definitely belong here. That's for sure. Do you, do you expect them all to be able to go through spring practice? Or? Oh yeah, there's no doubt they're all going through spring. A lot of those guys play positions where you lost some key guys last year, running back, defense, and end corner. How do you expect somebody to step in and be a downer in the markets, but how good is it to get you know, top level talent in the system? Well, it's good. And then, like you say, whether they end up starting or not, which they could start, but then they've got a spring in, got a summer in. So you're talking about even if they can be a quality backup and be ready to take 20 snaps a game, the opening game, and then grow into a role. Or they may start, you know, you don't, you'll never know. Uh, you know, those, those are, to me, that, that's really big, it really is. Jimbo, you went to Leonard Warner earlier in the day. Just what would he bring for your defense? Uh, size, athleticism, range, intelligence. See, that's a guy we've been in the battle with the whole time. It was us, Georgia, Stanford, Alabama, all kinds of schools. And, you know, it was a thing that we, it was, we knew it was going to go down in the end. And uh, we felt all along that we had one heck of a shot to get him. I just knew he would be a guy that would go through the process of looking uh, strategically at everything he had to look at before he made a decision. But we're ecstatic to have him. I mean, he's got range, size, intelligence. Be an inside guy, can rush outside, plays the pass very well, very good ball skills, runs the track, runs the 400 meters on the track team, you know, at 228 pounds. So, I mean, very athletic, long range of guy. But your philosophy on recruiting quarterbacks, this is at least the second time you brought in two in one class. Is that ideal? Would you rather be one per class? Yeah, I, don't, I don't think there's anything. You go, you get you get the guys you want, you guys that think you can play, let them compete. I don't, I don't buy into one or two, and it's worked out different places both ways, you know. And I think both these guys are very dynamic. They're very strong in, in knowledge, arm talent, intelligent decision making. They're accurate. I think they have a chance to be really, really good players. With you, is it different though recruiting the quarterback? Do you want to have more like, I don't know, one on one talks with them? But I'm seeing how much well, you do. Play. I mean, you want, because you're talking about the guy who's pulling the pin and touching the ball in every play. You want to know his DNA and how he thinks as much as you possibly can. And that's why the thing that hurts me is that they have to come to me a lot because I can't go out. I mean, and see those guys in the spring and the different things that go on. But get them in camp, get around them, which we ever do with both these guys, uh, knowing, their, knowing who they are, what they are, and got them here for a lot of talks. And I'm going to tell you, on the board, and, uh, really intelligent football instincts and knowledge of the game both of them have. Is, and pick things up when they were here, when you sit and talk to them defensively, schematics, fundamentals, pick things up extremely well, learn very easily. The two, the two kids from Turner County, were they? How Cam Irving slipped through the crack? Had us in Georgia Southern. How Xavier Rhodes slipped through the crack? How Bjorn? I mean, it, it been a lot. Of guys do it. You get in those small towns, and it, it's hard access. People ain't gonna, People don't work sometimes. People people get lazy. And these guys here, one. I mean, we we found saw Terry first, and we're. I mean, this guy's six foot three. He's two hundred. He's going to be 220 pounds for his over with, but he, you know, he's 100, 199 to 202 right now playing basketball. Going to be a big, I mean, going to be a big guy. Can really run ball skills, routes, toughness. And then all of a sudden, we, we saw Terry, I mean, we saw him on the film. We said, man, who's this guy? And we saw him play basketball. And then we were started really researching and went back and watched him two or three times. I think this guy's got a tremendous future. I mean, you know, this, this goes back to guys yet. You know, we'll see how he pans out. But I mean, I think he's got, you know, Found Corey Webster that way, found Randall Gay that way, Travis Daniels that way. Guys that no one recruited. That was called Corey Webster two weeks before signing. He was going to Southern Miss, the only offer he had. I mean, there's guys out there if you go flip up the rocks and study. And they're not always, you don't always go looking for Jim. They just happen to be there. And we took them. I, I think these guys have a tremendous, tremendous future. And then when, when other schools try to get in late. Oh, yeah. And after we are, Georgia, Alabama, everybody in the world got in. But I said that's the way it always goes. I mean, I, you know, because in, in the world of social media, <clears throat> Once it starts, it goes. You know what I'm saying? Once, once, and once one big time school goes, it happens. So, coach, when, when you're an assistant, kind of find those players, and how do you guys go about bringing them to the to the board and bringing the discussion? Say, hey, I found this player. Put them on. Them. Come them. tell me. Throw the basket. Put the film on. I and the sky don't lie. And then we know, find out everything we can. See if they have the skills on film. And why to watch them? And then have you seen them play? Have you seen the practice? Talk to the people, and then, then just start the whole process. Do you guys ever ask questions of how come people haven't really? Found you yet, or I don't care. Is, is that kind of alarming at first? No, no I mean I, that's the other people's problem. Not, that ain't the kids' problem. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I mean, everybody wants to I mean what, what did they do wrong? They've been playing and where they've been all the time, and we've had we we've had quite a few guys, and we've been very fortunate having guys that have Devontae Devontae Freeman. I remember him, when, we were, when we signed Devontae, when we recruited him, he was a zero star. 
You realize that? Never started a game. He was going to be a senior in high school. Xavier Rhodes, three star. Cam Irvin wasn't even on the board. He was a zero star. Like Ontario, zero star. I mean, that happened, man. And just, if I have to wait and tell somebody else to tell me he's a player, then I need to get out of business. Is that rewarding or exciting when you kind of flip on the, the tape for the first time you see a guy that maybe no one else is? is well, that? I mean, I don't know if it's exciting, but I think for the kid it is, you know, at the end of the day. And you take out all the things that go with them. I mean, you, I mean, you don't go trying to do that. There's, it's not an <laughs> avenue where I, I'll still look and find out all these gyms because I've done a couple of them. Because when you start going out, then you start reaching. Listen, the guy is either good enough or he isn't. We have to evaluate and judge when we see the film. We have those sorts of guys that kind of go on the radar. What's it like to kind of talk to them and get in their head and just kind of see what it's like for them in terms of how they work and how they approach things? I'm sure they do come with the chip on their Oh, they do, no doubt. Because they have something to prove and they want, they want to work at it. And to me, that's the key because at the end of the day, the talent level is all going to equal out. It's the guys who want to work, who want to grind, who want to be driven to do the things that other guys aren't willing to do. Those are the guys that make it. And sometimes those guys do a great job of it. And we've been fortunate. I mean, sometimes. You know, they don't work out, but for the most time, we've been very fortunate in that regard. Yeah, Akers, uh, what went into his recruitment and in general? How hard is it to, to get a kid out of state, especially in the oh, state? Oh, the levels of when you get great players out of state, man, you're you're at the mercy of everything around because you're, as I say, you're 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 the foreigner, <laughs> you're the, you're the stepchild, as they say, coming into that scenario because you don't know, you don't have the background, you don't have the lay of the land, you don't have all the things that that you know go with it, and but again, national brand name. Consistency of program, success rate, graduation rates, personalities of your team, all those things carry carry those factors. And we were very fortunate. Our, our staff, that Jay and, and uh, Brew and those guys did a great job of, and then we did the staff recruiting head coach. Uh, DJ Matthews committed real early, uh, and then it seemed like he visited a couple of schools. Was he always telling you guys I'm coming? Or, mm -hmm. or? I understand something. When guys commit early, see all y'all quit talking about it. All you all you write all the writers you quit writing about it. So. What does what everybody in the world want? What does everybody in the world want? Attention. Everybody in the world wants attention. They want to be special. Well, when they commit, they're not, they're, there's no story for y'all. So you quit writing about it. So how are they going to get your attention? I'm going to come back out and open up recruiting. So they come back out and get attention. I mean, something, and that, that's what happened. But he was very honest with me. He said, take some trips. And, you know, it makes you nervous. But that's part of it. I mean, guys, sometimes when guys come in early, they realize, oh, oh no, the limelight's over with. And they jump back on it, but and that's not always the case with him. I'm not saying that, but that happens with a lot of guys. He's a pretty special guy. Always, oh, he's really good. And with, I mean, he can get open. He's dynamic. He's smart. He can, as a returner or a slot, but he likes to get enough juice to go outside. You know, even though he's a slider guy, he, you know, if you go outside, he has special speed at that side. He's got that. With the lack of numbers that y'all have at wide receiver, how much of an impact do you think he can make next year? No, we'll see. I don't know. That's up to him. He's good enough. The best player to play. He'll have, he'll have an opportunity. We saw him with Derek Nani last year, um, you know, except for the injuries, and it kind of just held him back. And when he's fully healthy, you saw the push that you guys had. How important is it to have such a, you know, a big standout player there up the middle? Well, anything. It's like in baseball, you know, when you have a great center in basketball, it's fun to go play defense. He can be in a race around the goal. You got a great nose guard, stop the run, push the pocket. Baseball, you got a great shortstop, second baseman, center fielder. Catcher, it's fun to play. You got to be strong up the middle. You got to. It's got everything starts inside out. When you got that push, now, because the people now have to double, you now become one player better across the board. The guys, you can't solo block it in the, in the middle of the attack on things. So it's a huge part. When you guys are going through all this recruiting through months and months and not even months, years, sometimes early in high school, is it rewarding when the kids finally sign the dot? You guys oh, I don't know if it's rewarding or relief. Relief. <laughs> it's over with and start again. But it is. I mean, it, it, it's a culmination of sometimes three, four, five years of work. You know, sometimes it's a year, but I mean, you know, it, 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 there's a big lead up to that. And, you know, it's like a project, something you work, think about something you weren't worked on for three years and all of a sudden you got right to the end and it fell apart. How much fun, or you hit it, it is. It's very rewarding and very, but at the same time, you have to turn around and do it again and you can't take it personal because you you're not going to win them all. Never have, nobody ever has, nobody ever will. Well, obviously, Derek Brooks is one of the best that's ever played. Um, his son, there's going to be some expectations when your Derek Brooks son playing at Florida State from fans. Does he have the kind of mindset that can handle that? And he is on the we'll find out. By it. They're not going to be for me. Right. Kevin's his own person. I never want to judge it that way. And that's why I don't ever compare players. And I, and I think it's unfair for people to think that. So I hope they don't. But I mean, if they may do it, human nature may make you do it. But at the same time, let DeKalen be DeKalen. Let him use his own skill set to be his own player. And, 
And if we didn't think he could be a huge part of our program and play and really contribute to us, we wouldn't recruit. We think he's an outstanding player. And the way we're going to use him, we think he can, he can really, really help us.